So uh, after two days in Baja Blanca, um, I, it was time for me to move on to, uh, to Buenos Aires and uh, got off to a pretty early start in the morning and, and, uh, and made my way. I didn't, have a, I didn't have a really big massive day's riding uh, today. Um, it was uh, it was still you know about ten hours, but I had plenty of you know I took my time. I had like two to three hour break. Well, I, you know, just stopped at some nice little places along the way. And the first the first part was pretty cloudy, and then it got then then the weather picked up as the clouds lifted. Um, but it was a really a really good ride. You know, this, these sort of roads I liked a lot better than the big highways, uh, even though there's a lot more traffic to contend with. Um, just a lot, a lot better, more fun to ride, you know. Um, but it was pretty barren for the first hour, uh, uh, two to three hours, and then started going through some towns. Uh, and then Buenos Aires sort of springs up on you pretty quickly. You, you go through an industrial area and then you're basically in the city. Um, Really, I mean, Buenos Aires is a beautiful city. Um, if you ever get a chance to visit, I highly recommend it. Four to five days is probably enough to see all the things you'd really want to see. Because there's, you know, unless you're going to go across to Uruguay, um, there's, there's really not much around. Um, Montevideo in Uruguay is pretty cool too, but there's not much around other than that. So you go outside of the city and you, get, you pretty much get into the country pretty much immediately. Um, Big city, port city, uh, beaches are so so. You've got to go south to get to the nice beaches in Buenos Aires. Um, I'm sure there's some nice ones north as well. Um, but uh, st I was still having issues with my uh, with my fuel a little bit. Uh, it, it was with each new tank, it was getting better, but my fuel fuel pump had pretty much uh, had you know it just didn't deal with that bad fuel and. Uh, Aside from taking it all apart and just giving it a, a really good clean, um, I just decided to replace it. It's not that expensive when I got back to Miami. Because uh, it's just one of those things you just don't want to have issues with. It can be dangerous if it, you know, if you're accelerating and overtaking someone all of a sudden it fails on you. But you know, once I got to Buenos Aires, I had quite a few days. Uh, of planning to do. So I had to organise for my bike to be flown back and I couldn't really book my own flight until I definitely had a because when, when your bike goes from Buenos Aires to to wherever you're travelling to, Eric Eric went to Africa, one of the guys I met up with in Buenos Aires who I met on the Star Rap. Um, so you, you, because you've got to basically deliver your bike to the airport um, basically one or two days before it's due to fly out. So you've got to basically get all your paperwork organised. Again, you've got to pay cash, which is like, it's the equivalent of a like 1700 US dollars cash. And Argentina is a nightmare to get cash. I actually had, I, I used to carry about, about 800 US dollars in cash on my, on my bike in different parts. Just having, a, just having some spare cash here, there and everywhere in different bags and stuff like that. Um, you know, for me that was that was uh, pretty important, just in case for any emergencies you had, you know, get out of travel cash. You, you know, uh, if you needed to get repairs or something like that done, and you needed parts or anything like that, you needed cash. Um, but Buenos Aires was just a nightmare because basically you could you could withdraw the equivalent um, of around about 200 220 dollars a day. That was all US dollars a day um, in Argentinian pesos, and, and it was just ridiculous, you know. So basically, I had like three or four cards, and I'd put, take 200 out on one, so I'd then go back to the bank the next day and do the same thing. So I just got, for three days, I just basically did that because they only accept cash. And I, I'll give you the exact figure in the final video of how much I paid. My bike weighed just under 300 pounds, 300 kilos, sorry, uh, with all the gear on it. Um, so 
you know, you, you get charged for that. Like the BMW 1200, so probably about 310 kilos. Um, sorry, pounds, sorry. 300, no, kilos. 300, yeah, 300 kilos. Um, so you, um, yeah, so you've got to basically, uh, um, you, you, you pay by the pound and, and by the volume. Uh, but you, you, you have to get everything organised for your bike before you book your flight because if for instance anything goes wrong with your bike, uh, with, your, with your trip for the bike, you know, you might get a call to say, oh they've delayed it till next Wednesday, your, your bike going out, so you, you can't deliver it until Monday, you know. So you just got to, you know, so it just means that your, your flight back is probably going to be more expensive for your person. Um, so. Uh, so I, that, that's that's pretty much all, all I had to do in Buenos Aires was organise all that, then organise my flight, and then I also had a power core, uh, a power core anchor power core, which is a big five kilo battery, and I should have put it on my bike because they told they when you del deliver the, your bike they tell you that you can only have your riding gear like your helmet, your jacket, your pants, your boots, all of that, and your um, your equipment as far as your tools for your bike you can carry all of that and you're supposed to have like hardly any gas left in it I probably had a gallon of gas in mine and they 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 didn't bother asking me to believe the tank or anything they just said fine um, so the, the the trick is to uh, I, if, if I was to do it again, I would put my I would have put my battery on it because the battery cost me three hundred dollars. It's a five hundred dollar battery. It cost me three hundred dollars to ship it back because no one would take it. Uh, so but the thing about it is, it was either I had to make a decision: either leave the battery there and just give it away to somebody, or try to sell it. We wouldn't have a chance of selling it. Um, leave the battery there and then buy a new one here because I really love the battery. Um, it's a pain in the backside that's five kilos, and I'll talk about. I'll give a review of it when I get back. But it was a. It's a. It's just fantastic for camping, for um, for when you get just for even get getting into a hotel. I, I would just take the power anchor power core um, um, battery, plug it into the thing, and then I could charge all my devices off that. I didn't have to worry about plugging in a computer and getting a pissy little charge from my computer. I basically plugged the anchor power core in. It had fast charging as well. So, you know, there's only a few modifications I'd make for the next version of it if I was if I was anchor. Um, obviously, trying to make it lighter, uh, denser, and uh, but the same amount of power. They don't need more power with it. They just need it to be lighter, and probably a little bit more compact, and then have some wireless charging on it as well. So you can just put your phone on top of it. it would be a smart move for them as well. But all in all, a fantastic device, and I would have, I would have bought another one if I got back to the US. So that was going to be another five hundred. So the decision in the end, I would have preferred to only pay like a hundred dollars shipping, but I had to pay three hundred, and you know, everything's pretty much a rip off in Argentina, and everything's got to be cash, even with the big dealers like FedEx and all that sort of stuff. They want cash; it's just ridiculous. Um, and you'll find that all your hotels in Argentina, they'll. If you go through booking.com or anything like that, they'll have you pay you pay at the hotel and then they'll always ask for cash, which is a pain, pain in the backside. For smaller Airbnbs, you have to pay cash anyway. You know? um, they just want that. But it was quite a pretty little ride and now I'm getting pretty close to the city. Um, you basically come over, you come through a rise and go over a couple of bridges and then you're pretty much getting into the city as you go down. Um, no, it, was, it was a pretty cool ride, but yeah. So B Buenos Aires was all all about getting organised to get back to uh, to Miami, uh, Miami Beach, and and get get everything in line, uh, and just get rid of stuff that I don't that I don't want anymore. Making sure that I you know I've got uh, two. I, I ended up buying two bags there as well, so I could put all my gear into two bags, so I didn't have to pay. An extra hundred hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars for the extra luggage. So I thought if I have to pay that with the current situation I was in, is this is Buenos Aires now? 
if I have to pay that with the current, I might as well buy another couple of bags. So I bought a couple of bags for the same price, a couple of waterproof bags. And I got a pretty good deal. Got two of them for $160, $170. And they were really nice bags too, National Geographic waterproof. And they were big bags, so I, I put all my gear into those two bags and then had my backpack. So I was allowed to put my tank bag uh, on the bike, all my, uh, just because it was a little bit cheer out. Um, I was able to put all my all my tools on there. I should have put my camping equipment as well. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. My bike's pretty crazy looking with the kangaroos and all that sort of fun, so it always attracts a fair bit of attention. But um, yeah, so I, I, I had all that to organise. Also, Eric was going to be there um, when I got there. He was already there in Buenos Aires and he was organised his, his bike to go to um, He's still on his trip too, by the way. That's like, you know, it's what, uh, April, May, June, July, August. He's been, he's been going for 12 months now. A pretty amazing trip. He's now in, in Switzerland, I think. Um, but yeah, we caught up, had a few beers, and then we met up with a couple of other riders along the way. And, um, and, uh, and, and we had a couple of beers with them as well. Another guy who was taking his bike on the same, uh, at the same time as us. He was taking his back to LA, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, it's, it's under $2,000 to ship your bike back. If your bike's worth it, well then you definitely want to do it. Um, you know, if your bike's worth only two or 3000 you, you might want to try and offload it somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, that's all Buenos Aires was all about. And but, you know, we, we, I spent like five days there, uh, five or six days there, so um, it was also, you know, have a look around the city and, uh, and take in a few sites. And so there's basically one day, it took one full day, went there a few days earlier to get all the paperwork done, then had to go into the city and get some more paperwork done. And it wasn't, wasn't a tough thing to do. Um, and then had to go, uh, and then with all the documents, you go to the airport and they give you directions. It's a little bit difficult to find but you meet a, there's a guy there who helps you and takes you to where you've got to take it then you've got to then you've got to pack and stack it and uh, um, yeah just make just make sure you don't have too much fuel in there you know I tried to ride around the day before and all of a sudden for, for so long during this trip I was getting terrible fuel economy on this end of the trip with the Argentinian gas and all of a sudden I, I got a good batch and it was hard to, to get the battery right down so so yeah, this is where I, I stayed just down the road there. I just thought I'd go in. This is the end of the end of the main part of the trip. So I thought that I'd go somewhere and just have a few beers. I was pretty sweaty and and uh, yeah, pretty uh, horrible feeling. Like not horrible feeling, but just sweating, sweating all over because it's so hot there. And you know, driving through the city, you're always stopping and, and all that. So I just parked my bike on the footpath and I thought, oh, well, someone complains, who cares? And then I'll just sit down and have a few beers. And that's what I did. I was staying there on the left there, the tall building there. Um, but this is a really nice little area of Buenos Aires. Lots of restaurants, cafes. It's really a live sort of, sort of area. Um, you know, a lot of seafood and, and, uh, and such restaurants. But yeah, so you can sound pretty sweet. Uh, anyway, I, I enjoyed the beer when I got there, and uh, you'll see a photo now. Big one litre beer, beer thing. But yeah, all right, guys, any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll be happy to answer them. Have a good day.